timeline because in the Bible it's timed out for 7,000 years and we know that so that's what we have 7,000 years here but this time down here is something that's a little longer than that timeline and how many of you know that God can change dates and times we, 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 we saw that in um, Daniel chapter 2 so he changed the timeline here and he gave the world 2,000 years of grace for people to get right and get saved to become his, uh, part of his family, which we don't see up here in this timeline. Because when you read the Bible, you've got to understand that, that John the Baptist said, Behold, the kingdom of God is near. Now, he wasn't talking about the kingdom of God in heaven. He was talking about the kingdom of God, the 1,000 years with the Jews. Do, do, do we understand that? Hmm? That's very important to understand when you read that. See, so everything was geared to the 1,000 years when the Jews were going to be the nation that will actually be the nation of the world, that it will be the capital of the world. Jerusalem will be the capital of the world. As Frank said, Christ will be seated there at the capital of the world. King David will be there as the king of Israel. So you have to understand that when you read the scriptures. Now, we're down here on this timeline. So it has stretched out from the cross 2,000 years until something else was added. Up here, you don't see the rapture. Do we understand that? When was the rapture first mentioned? Now, we know there's types and shadows in the Old Testament, but not, you know, about an, um, Enoch. Enoch was a type of the rapture. Physically, he was raised and went up to heaven. Him and God was walking down the road one day, and, and the Lord said to uh, Enoch, you know, we're closer to my house than yours, so why don't you come home with me? And Enoch said, yeah. <laughs> they went up. So that's a type of, but they, they didn't understand that there would be a group of people worldwide now, millions of people at the same time resurrected. That's what the rapture is. Okay? So it's not just one individual. You can say Noah was a type. <clears throat> but here we see something that when you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says, I'm going to show you a mystery. Now, there's mysteries in the Bible. One of the mysteries in Colossians, I was reading that today, says that he's going through the book of Colossians. Now, verse by verse, and make sure we understand every verse. And there's two verses that I, I, I don't have a, a handle on it yet, but I just hold it, put it on the shelf, and God will show me. But anyway, we, we see that... Uh, That the rapture now is something that's been added on our timeline. It wasn't on the timeline in the Old Testament and, and, and even during this period of time of preaching down here. Now the second coming of Christ was on their timeline because you read that in Daniel. You read that in Zechariah. Okay, about the second coming. So they knew about the second coming, but they didn't know about the rapture, the catching up of the saints. Okay, everybody follow me there. Okay, so, so what we want to do now, we want to read Ezekiel 38, and we're going to use our chart here on, on the bottom chart. Where would we put Ezekiel 38? Okay, it's important. All right, anybody want to volunteer? Yeah. Come on. All, all right. All right, so let's find the rapture on, on our time. On our timeline, we'll find the rapture. The rapture of the church, which we find in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. And by the way, it says, encourage each other with these words. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Encourage each other with these words. And all I hear is people, oh, I don't think, I don't believe. Wait a minute. That ain't what the word says. It says, encourage. In fact, turn, somebody turn to that and read it. Read it. It's in 1 Thessalonians 
chapter 4, verse 18. Just re read that. Put it on the board. Put it on the board. Amplify. Let's, let's make sure we just get that. I, I like teaching because teaching, I want to, we, we got to understand and comprehend. We just can't, you know. Now look at that. Therefore, what is therefore? Therefore. <laughs> therefore, <laughs> in comfort and encourage one another with these words. What words? The words prior to that about the rapture. So when I speak about the rapture, it's to encourage the people of God. Well, I don't believe there's going to be a rapture. I, 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 wait a minute, that ain't what the word of the Lord says. Encourage one another with these words. Everybody got it? I'm punctuating that for a reason. Because I deal... I talk to a lot of people wherever I go, and I tell you what, they don't know a whole lot about the Bible, I'll tell you that right now. Not that I know everything. We only know in part. We only prophesy in part. But the part I do know, I know. All right, so we find, here's going to be the rapture. So I'm saying, where is Ezekiel 38? All right, are we going to come back and say, let's just put it about, now this is just an estimate Let's say that it will happen about mm, two or three years, maybe, maybe less. All right, now let's read the Bible and see what happens. Keep that in mind, because <clears throat> what we're doing, we're identifying now Ezekiel 38. Now, before we go into it, let me give you a little background here. Remember... Ezekiel 37 was about Israel becoming a nation. Is that right? It's all about Israel becoming a nation. Two sticks become one stick. Judah, Israel becomes just Israel, a nation of Israel. So, this, the next thing that happens is this war that's going to take place. <coughs> that actually is going to bring a revival to the world. And you'll see that as we read through the scriptures here. So we know, we, can, we know that we're talking about in our generation. Now, how do we know? Is Israel back in the land? All right. And that's found in uh, Ezekiel 37. All right. So we can plant that down. Well, Israel's back in the land. So they're right here. About right in here somewhere for the last, they've been a nation, I think, for 62 years now. Okay? So, the next thing on the calendar or the timeline will be this war. Now, they've had a lot of little wars and all of that. But this is the big baby. This is the one that will totally wipe them out. And that's what the devil's trying to do. But... We're going to see God coming to the, their rescue, okay? So let's start. And we've got some of these scriptures. We'll move fast, real fast. Ezekiel 38, verse 1. <clears throat> now, Ezekiel is talking, and he's saying, listen, the word of the Lord come, just came to me. And let me tell you what he said. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, next verse, Son of man, set your face against Gog. Not God, but Gog, G-O-G. Gog is a ruler, okay? He's a ruler. He's the leader of this, this great army that's going to come down and, <clears throat> and try to crush Israel. Notice this. Of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, of uh, uh, Meshach, and of Tubal, and prophesy against him. So God is telling Ezekiel to prophesy against this ruler named Gog and all the other leaders and and these people that are going to come down. Prophesy. Okay, notice that. All right, next verse, four. Now we're going to move right on down the line here to the next verse. And I will turn you back. Now I will turn you back. Remember we said identify you. Who is you? G-O-G-O-G-O-G. You see that? I will turn you, that is Gog, back and put hooks into your jaws. God, Gog, and I will bring you forth and all your army. So what is this saying now? <clears throat> is he going to literally put hooks in their mouth? No. 
that's an expression to, to get us to understand that he can't help it. He's going to come whether he likes it or not. Because he got a hook in his mouth and God is drawing him towards the mountains of Israel to do something. Okay? Look what it says now. And all your army, now horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor. A great company with bucklets and shields, all of them handling swords. Okay, now they're using the type of weaponry back in that day. They didn't have airplanes, they didn't have tanks, they didn't have the armor, armament that we have today. Everybody understand that? So we can place that in, it'll be tanks and guns and everything else. Okay, go to the next verse now. Now, Persia, now we know that's Iran, Cush, Put, or Lib uh, Libya with them. So these are some of the nations that's coming down with Gog, okay? All of them with shields and, and armor. So they'll have all of their military equipment with them. They're coming down against Israel now. All right, next verse. Gomar and all his hordes, the house of uh, Togarmath, Math, Notice this, in the uttermost parts of the north. Now, we'll stop right there. Now, we're standing in Israel. Everybody got the picture? We're standing in Israel. How many? Now, I'm standing in Israel, and I'm looking north, let's say. I'm looking north. So what is north of Israel? Syria, uh, Lebanon, Turkey, Russia. You see that in your mind? To the left is the Mediterranean Sea, <clears throat> which is west. East is towards Iran, China, India. And then, of course, to the north, I'm sorry, to the south is Egypt. Can you see that in your, in your mind? That's the picture you want to see. So we see the uttermost parts of the north. Then we know it's that nation that's at the uttermost part of the north. <laughs> and you look on the uh, map and you see that's Russia, okay? So, <clears throat> the, uh, and all of his many, pe many people and are with, with you, Gog. Okay, next verse. Now you, Gog, be prepared. Yes, prepare yourself, you and all your companies that are assembled about you, and you will be a guard and a commander of them. So we see that he's the, he's the ruler. He's the commander of all of this nation, okay? <coughs> How many of you know now that Russia is coming into Syria now, bringing tanks, airplanes, troops? The United States is very concerned about that, okay? Now, here we are in America. I'm going to, this is pause for a moment. I'm going to pause and just get ourselves to think about something. We're in America right now, and we're comfortable in the Shield of Faith building here. And Hey, this is nice, you know. We're reading about this, all these people. But let's change the scenery just for a moment. And I want you, all of you to come with me, and we're going to fly over there in the spirit into Russia. All right, now we're sitting over there in a church building in Russia. And then we read this, and somebody in the congregation raises their hand. Uh, I said, yes, what, what is it? Hey, this is us. This is us. How many got the picture? Did I lose you on that? See, it don't mean a whole lot, but, you know, we're over here, ha, ha, ha. But suppose we were over there and we read this. They're talking about us. Our nation is going to go against Israel. And we're Christians. And I'm in the service. And i got to be at that big company of troops going against Israel. And as I read on in Ezekiel, we're going to be destroyed. How would it move your nerves a little bit? Just, would it shake your case just... Just a scotch. So, so, so you got to see that. And then, now it's more alive to you, isn't it? I mean, hey, that's right. We're in the Bible here. Oh, boy. Oh. See, we gotta, we got to see that, that you cannot have the Western mentality in interpreting scriptures. 
Because I guarantee you that if we were over there, and I'm, and I'm speaking to uh, all of you that are Russians, and all of you are in the service in, in, in Russia, you're the ones we're talking about. And this thing comes alive to you real quickly, like, wow. Then you go say, Lord, how can I get out of this? Something to think about. I'm not going that way no more. That's, I'll let you digest that later. All right, now, so we find out that Gog is the commander, the ruler. We, I've said that before. The Bible makes that very clear. Verse 7. Go to the, first, the next verse. <clears throat> <clears throat> After many days you shall be visited and mustered for service in the latter, notice, latter years. How many believe we're in the latter years right now? All right, see, identification. We certainly are not in the former years. I mean, look how long we go. This is, we're down here to the 6,000 years, the latter years of this dispensation. Okay? So there's another marker. We know it's in the latter years. We say that we're in the latter years now. Many, when you read the Bible, you will see the last days, then you'll see the latter years and what will happen in the latter years, and what will happen in the last days, okay? <clears throat> These are markers that tell us where we are on the timeline. All right. In the latter years you shall go against the land, now notice this, that is restored from the ravish of the sword. Now we've got to identify that land. Who can tell me? The name of that land. I know Mike can. Israel. Right? Well, as you read on, it'll verify that out. Land that is, uh, is restored. How many know before the Jews, 62 years ago, it was desolated. It was a desert. It was rocks. And they got a lot of rocks over there still. But you've got to understand that that land wouldn't grow nothing until the Jews came back and God began to bless that land again. And by the way, that land belongs to God. And that the scripture says that. So look what it says. The land that is restored from the rabbish of the sword. Now, remember in 70 AD, they came in and they killed over a million Jews. I don't. I wish I could had time to go through all that history where you get. I could build a better picture for you. I don't have the time tonight, so you have to grab it a little bit. Try to remember it. So it's ravished by the sword. Uh, Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. Every block that was on the other block was take, taken apart. And there's many reasons why we that they tell us that, that happened. But I'm not, I'm leaving out a lot. But anyway, it was ravished, and all the people now. In Matthew 24, you will read that Jesus prophesied that. How many remember that in Matthew 24, that that would happen? The Christians in Israel at that time remember what Jesus said, and when they seen the, the, the army coming, they fled to the hills and were saved. Not a Christian was killed, and the Jews stayed there and fought the Romans, and the Romans slaughtered them and took Thousands and thousands of Jewish people and scattered them all around the world. That's why we know that they were scattered around the world. And then Ezekiel tells us that they're coming back. Remember when you read that God was bringing them back. Now they're in the land. See, all those prophecies have been fulfilled in, some, in my generation anyway, in yours. Some of you, of course, you know, you, you weren't born at that time. You don't remember, but... Anyway, when you read the scriptures, you'll see all that has taken place in our generation, in my generation, anyway. It's something to behold. All right, now, let's move on. Where people, notice this, where people are gathered out of many nations. Who are these people that were gathered out of many nations? Anybody can tell me? Rachel, who are they? Huh? Right, Jews. Say Jews. Jews, you got it. The Jewish people. We're talking about the Jewish people. See, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to embarrass nobody, but I, I don't want you. To. 
you, you got to see this. <laughs> See, how each word and the way it's described are gathered out of many names. What we just read, uh, <clears throat> the valley of the, the, the dry bones. Remember the dry bones? Remember that? That was the Jewish people. They were in graves. These nations were like graves to them. And God brought them all back, these Jewish people. And they were scattered in many nations. When were they scattered? In 70 A.D., when Titus, the general of Rome, came in with his army and <laughs> slaughtered them. Okay? All right, and that's you'll find in Matthew 24. <clears throat> Notice what it says. Where people are gathered out of many nations upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. And for how many years was it a waste? Almost 2,000 years. Almost 2,000 years. Nobody wanted the land. Now everybody wants it. Isn't that amazing? All right. <sighs> Which had been a continual uh, waste, but its people are brought forth out of the nations, that's the Jews, and they shall dwell securely, all of them. Now, underline that securely, all of them. All right, now we've got to move fast. Let's see. Got half an hour to try to unfold this for you. Next verse. You shall ascend, I'm getting back to Gog now, and this, all this army, and you shall ascend and come like a storm. You shall be like a cloud to cover the land, and the land is Israel, and you and all your hosts and many people with you. So it's going to be a vast army of different nations and all coming down now, this is important for you to understand. You probably say, where is it? What do I need to understand all this about? You just hold on. Because we got a part in this. Next verse. Thus saith the Lord, God, God, at our Heavenly Father, God, at the same time, thoughts shall come into your mind, and you will devise an evil plan. I want you to look at that. We know that words are seeds. We are the garden of God. But you know what? He plants good seeds into us. But who else plants bad seeds into us? If we love him. Satan. That's why you cast down every imagination. Now, I know you've worked today. Many of you have worked. But where's your mind right now? Fading out fast, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, let's tell the truth. <laughs> Where am I at? I'm in church. Oh, you're at church. Okay. I'm not fussing. I, <laughs> Michelle was bringing the word Sunday. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I understand all of that, you know. <laughs> What's my name? What's your name? <laughs> I don't know. All right. little. I should not throw that out. I'm praying that I'll get all that out of my messages. All right. Thus saith the Lord God, at the same time, thoughts shall come into your mind, and you will devise an evil plan. Now, either Satan will do that or just, oh, God. All right. Next verse. And you will say, I will go up against, against an open country. Talking about Israel now. The land of unwalled villages, I will fall upon those who are at rest. They're at security, at rest. Remember that, at rest, security. Who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. So they don't have to worry about any. Now remember, you got to stop and think. Back in that time when Ezekiel was saying that, we know it was here. <sighs> Wait a minute. Way before the, uh, somewhere, Babylon, there's Babylon there. So we'd have to say somewhere in here when this prophecy, uh, five, maybe four, no, five or six hundred years here somewhere, okay? When Ezekiel was prophesying that, and it was prophesying about a time that would happen down here, but of course he had his his timeline that he was going by, and the ascension, and so 
So it would be somewhere in here on, their, on, their, on that top line. Okay, so you got that now. So this prophecy came, let's say, roughly 24 or 25 years ago back. And he's prophesying that in the future. Oh, right, you see that? All right. Time. Listen, one day to God is a thousand years. A thousand years is but one day. So don't let the time element, you know, mess you up. In other words, to God, it was just yesterday. Okay, that's how quick it is. All right, now, go to the next verse. Now, they're going to come down, they're going to take spoil and pray. To turn your hand upon the desolate places, notice this, and what were the desolate places? The land of Israel, now inhabited and assail the people gathered out of where? Of the nations. And who was gathered out of the nations? Israel, the people, the Jews. You see that? Okay. Who have attained livestock goods who dwell at the center of the earth. Palestine. So we know right over there is the center of the earth. Jerusalem, Israel is the center of the earth. Everything happens over there. Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden. The flood, Abraham. Everything, and it's still happening over there. Everybody see that? Everything is happening over there. And even when Jesus comes back, the nations that are still on the earth will have to go. They will have to send representatives to Israel once a year to pay tribute to the king. And if they don't, they won't get no rain on their crops back in Hanahan. Okay? See the picture? All right. <clears throat> so, we know today Israel has got a lot of goodies. They're, they're high in technology. They, they're brilliant people, brilliant scientists. The next, th I think, probably to, 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 uh, would be the Germans. The Germans are probably the next brilliant people on the earth. Is that right, Mike? <laughs> you, you, Mike said, move on from there, Bob. <laughs> Well, they were on scientists. I mean, they, they, I mean, but they used it in the wrong way. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Next, please. Where's the center of the earth at? Good. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all their, now notice this, lion like cubs. Now, can you see a lion? And she has a whole bunch of cubs. Now, that's symbolic of a mother country that had a lot of, and they use there, if you see up there, they use a, or satellite area. Well, you know what a satellite is. Okay. Well, go back to the cub or come back to the lion. She has all these cubs. England has the image of a lion, and she has a lot of cubs. And we're, America is one of their cubs. How many of you know they scattered it? Yeah. We come from England, from different parts of the world. Cubs, not singular, but, pl uh, not singular, but plural. She had many. How many can see that in there? All right, you can see that. And I guess what we're all saying. Shall I say to you... Now, who are you? You is who? God and all those people. We're getting to the best part pretty soon, Rick. <laughs> you'll, you'll like this next part. Hey, I gotta go. oh, goodbye. Love you. Shall I say to you, have you come to take spoil? Have you gathered your host to take the prey? This is what America and all the, the UN is probably saying to them. What are you doing, Russia? To carry away silver and gold? To take away livestock and goods? To take away great spoils? Well, we would say great spoils like oil and See, um, <clears throat> I, 
A nation would not go to war. And we wouldn't bother anybody. But over there in uh, Monk's Corner, let's say Monk's Corner has got all kind of food. They got everything we want. And we don't have no food, no water. We don't have anything. And we're dying and we're starving to death. Now, normally, we wouldn't bother them. But if the condition has come forth as far as life and death, if we don't get some water pretty soon and some grandma's biscuits, we're going to die. How many of you know you'd be all, we'd go home, get our guns, and I'd probably be the leader, and we'd all, we'd go up there, and we would capture the, and get the spoils, and people over there in the other county would say, what are they, what are, they, what are them hand-to-hand -hand people doing? Are they going to get spoils? Yeah, we're going to get some spoil and some chicken and eggs. We're hungry. Now, I know that sounds silly, but that's true. Is that not true? See, if the conditions is great enough, so you've got to understand that God can create conditions. The devil can. And that would cause the rushes to come down. But notice this. We read a while ago that the, the enemy put a thought in their mind. And remember, whatever thought is in your mind, you're going after it. Hello? You're going after it. It's in your mind. You're watching TV. You're not even thinking about that ice cream. And all it hits your mind, and I'll guarantee you, if it stays on your mind, that's like a hook. <coughs> right to the refrigerator you go. How many of you see the picture? All right. <coughs> all right, we're going to go real quick. All right, next verse. Therefore, son of man, talking about Ezekiel, prophesy and say to God, thus saith the Lord God, in that day, when my people, Israel, dwell securely, will you not know it and be aroused? Isn't that amazing? So, Israel. Now, I'm thinking, I keep hearing this word security. Now, we know that the Antichrist is going to set up a seven-year covenant agreement with Israel and the nations around in that area. And they'll be living in security the first three and a half years. Because we know that after the three and a half years, the Antichrist will break that agreement and begin to go after the Jews and slaughter them. Okay? So keep that in mind. That's the future. So, they're in this period of time. This agreement that they have signed with some of the nations has guaranteed their security. You understand that? In the Muslim world, you make an agreement when your nation is weak. They keep the other nation off of your shoulders and off of uh, you. But as soon as you get strong enough, they say it's okay, you can break it, and now go get them. That's their thinking. Okay, you understand that? All right. So now. You, you, you not know it and be aroused. All right, they're going to be aroused. So they say, hey, man, it's like taking candy from a baby. They're in security. They're, they're, you know, they've let their guard down. They're arrested. They made this agreement with the Antichrist. So let's go get them, boys. All right, next verse. And you will come from your place out of the uttermost part of the north. And we said that was Russia. When you stop and see everything, you and many people with you, all of them riding on tanks and, and, and uh, a great host, a mighty army, trucks and all that. Well, we're using terminology of, of, of weaponry today. Okay, next verse. And you shall come up against my people Israel. I mean, it's so clear in this verse that we, what we're talking about here now. Like a cloud to cover the land. In the latter days, another stake put down, we know it's in the latter days, I will bring you against my land. God will bring this bunch of people against his land for a purpose. And you're going to see the purpose pretty soon because it's going to bring a revival to the world. That the nations may know, oh my goodness, notice this, I will bring you against my land. Why? 
that the nations may know, understand, and realize me when my holiness shall be vindicated through you, Gog, you, on all your army, vindicated and honored in your overwhelming destruction, O Gog, before their eyes. Now catch the picture. They're coming down. We're on the news. Fox News, all the news channels, Russia and all this coming against Israel. And all of a sudden, God's going to move and he's going to do something and he's going to destroy every one of them. And Israel will not have to lift a finger. Now, don't you think that's not going to shake the world? Okay, now let's move on. Now, we got the picture. Thus saith the Lord God. Are you he of whom I have spoken in older times by my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for years that I would bring you Gog against them? So he had other prophecies along the way that the prophets prophesied that God would bring the, this bunch of people against Israel. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Now notice, I wanna, I'm going to pause for a moment. 62 years ago, Israel was not back in the land. And that's an estimate. Oh, you got the picture? So that prophecy could not come forth then. But they've been back in the land for 62 years, and they are a strong nation, and I think they have the fourth largest army in the world. They have the atomic bomb, and they have a lot of military experience. And they are tuned to be able to fight any battle. But God chooses to fight this battle for them. Because they've been tricked into signing this agreement. And so they now are protected by the West. And America might have a point in that. And you don't have to worry about your security no more, Israel. You can use your money to, to, to feed your people, to do many other things and so forth and everything. We'll take care of the security for you. Mistake. We know that's a mistake. Because that's when all of this group of people up there in the uttermost parts and this group of people of Gog, hey, this is our time. Okay. Why does people just shoot people? <laughs> yeah. Well, we know the devil puts that into them, puts that thought in their mind, and they do it. Same things will be here. All these nations think this is the best thing in the world we're going to do. See, a lot of the people in the Western world and also in the Muslim and Arab world thinks that Israel is the problem, and so we can just get rid of Israel we wouldn't have this problem. Read my lips. That's not true. Because if Israel's going to be there, they ain't going nowhere. God's planted them back in the land. And we're going to see God move. And when he moves and you turn on your TV, the Holy Spirit's probably come all over you. And you're going to see. You're going you're to go out and start telling people about it's time to get right with God. Look what God is doing He's protecting his people. Now notice this. But in that day when God shall come against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, my wrath shall come up into my nostrils. Next verse. And in my jealousy, you know, God is jealous for us. You know, you'll find that in uh, James chapter 4, verse uh, 5. He's very jealous over his people. How many wives in here are jealous over your husband? All right. Susan is jealous over me. I'm jealous over her. But that's a good jealousy. You, you follow me? There's good jealousy. It's a, it's a protective jealousy. Okay? All right. In my jealousy and in, my, in the fire of my wrath have I said, surely in that day, and we numbered the day over there, there shall be a great shaking or cosmic catastrophic, yeah, thank you, in the land of Israel. Now we're over here. That's a big thing that's going to, going to happen. All right, next verse. 
So that the fishes of the sea and the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field are all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall tremble and shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the places shall fall and every wall, natural or artificial, shall fall to the ground. So it's going to be a big earthquake. God's going to cause a big earthquake. Now, these troops are coming in through the mountains, and all this is going to be falling on them. Okay? This is God. That's how, this is how God fights his wars. Okay? All right, next verse. Now, we're seeing all this on TV. It's going to shake us, too. And we have the answer to let them know. See, that's why I'm preaching this, that we can go tell them. Let me tell you what's happening here and share this with them. We'll have it on tape. You can give them a tape. And I will call for a sword against Gog, and throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God, every man's sword shall be against his brother over the dividing of booty. Now, here's the picture there. Let's see. All right, Mike, are you ready to spring into action? All right. Here's the booty. This is the booty. All right, all right here we go. go. That, that's mine. Hot. Did somebody, you follow me? They, they, they'll kill each other. How many of you know that's in the Bible? A hundred, it was 185,000 Syrian troops, Frank. 185,000 troops were killed by one angel in the time of Hezekiah. Is that right? So that'll be nothing new. They killed each other. And Israel won't have to lift a sword. All right, next verse. Isn't that the way crooks are, though? You know, if I can't have it, you can't either. Boom, boom, boom. And with pestilence and with bloodshed will I enter into the judgment with Gog. This is God's judgment upon him. And I will reign upon him and upon his horse, horse and upon that many people that are with him, terrors of rain and great hailstorms, fire, and brimstone. Sounds like Solomon Gomorrah, Gamar, don't it? So God is fighting the war for Israel, and this is coming upon all this army that's coming against Israel. Next. Thus will I demonstrate, now notice, my greatness and my holiness, and I will be recognized and understood, now this is God talking, and known in the eyes of many nations, Yes, they shall know that I am the Lord, the sovereign ruler who calls forth loyalty and obedient service. So the nations are going to really be alert and wake up, and that's going to bring revival. The Holy Spirit will be able to move tremendously. Now, next verse. And you, son of man, prophesy against God. Thus saith the Lord all right, that's 39. We're going to stop there. All right, that's it. That's it. We got it. Now, 39, you go over to 39, and it talks about uh, <clears throat> these dead bodies and all the birds will come and start eating their flesh. I don't know if you ever read this. They'll eat all that flesh, and they will have groups of people going out and burying all these soldiers, burying them, okay? And the world will see all of that by TV, and a great revival will break out. They will see... Hey, God is God. You know, sometimes it's like, it's like David. You know, David said this. Just, you know, be, be, before I was afflicted, I went astray. How many understand that? We, we, we all went astray. And we got afflicted. And David said, but I don't go astray no more.